Um, you gotta forgive me because I can uh, hook up your stereo and program your website, but I can't make a PDF or a PowerPoint to save my life. <laughs> so I'm gonna be a little bit all over the place. Um, my name's Angela Boatwright. I live in New York City. I've been there 12 years. Um, basically, I come from Columbus, Ohio. I was born and raised there. I started shooting photos. I'm a photographer. I started shooting photos when I was 14 of uh, pretty much live bands. I photographed live bands. This is really, really recent. I shot this a couple months ago in Norway. But I photographed live bands for about seven years. Um, a lot of hardcore bands, punk rock bands, and also a lot of my friends in Ohio were skateboarders and generally just cranky, disgruntled youth. So I photographed them a lot too. And in 93, 1993, I moved to New York City and started photographing New York hardcore bands and metal bands, other bands, and a lot of the skateboarders in New York. And my career has kind of evolved from I started photographing bands for zines. I'd get $40 per assignment to shoot for like a little black and white hardcore zine in 1993. And now I'm up to shooting catalogs for Urban Outfitters and stuff, making thousands of dollars a day, which is kind of cool. Um, but I basically started from the ground up. Um, this is one of my more recent photos, like I said, from my trip to Norway. Um, I will show you in lieu of a PDF, I will show you Basically my website um, for my company, it's called Killer of Giants. I started it a couple years ago to kind of be an umbrella for everything that I do. Um, so I began my career, like I said, as a freelance photographer and uh, just shooting a lot of portraits of any number of people. This is Kanye West. Uh, this is photographed in 99, 2000. These are just some, and I'll go through them loosely, some of the portraits that I've done. Oh, that's maybe not the best example. Rev and Run from Run DMC, uh, Red Man. This was actually photographed for Thrasher Magazine, one of my first, uh, what I considered big jobs when I was in New York City. Uh, this is a friend of mine, RJD2. He's actually, we went to the high school in Columbus, Ohio. And these are just some, again, some of my music portraits that I did as a freelance photographer. Um, as I was shooting photos, I'm an absolutely horrible art nerd, so I would go, one of the first things I did when I moved to New York was I went to the original alleged gallery on Ludlow Street in the Lower East Side, and I saw Thomas Campbell and Tobin Yellen and my friend Josh Wildman's photo show and it blew my mind and I've just been obsessed with art ever since. So I was freelancing, taking photos, doing a lot of very legitimate jobs, working for Lucky or like Seventeen or whatever, random magazines. But also at the same time, kind of keeping my ears to the ground about artists and going to see art shows and all sorts of stuff like that. Yeah, Jack Black, he's got really good taste in music, by the way. Um, this is for Guitar World. But uh, so I started, uh, as I was freelancing, I started kind of just accumulating a lot of friends that were into art. And I ended up uh, in about 2001 getting an assignment to photograph an advertising campaign, <coughs> I find it, for Truth, which is the anti smoking, um, you know, the whatever campaign people group. And they actually hired me because they needed a photographer who could not only take a cool photo, maybe something a little different, but somebody who knew about uh, artists, underground artists, up and coming artists, graffiti artists. So I actually worked with them to pick three artists to work on this campaign. This is Espo's piece. The truck um, was painted with him and KR, as Christian said earlier, it was painted for the Truth Campaign, which is kind of cool. You can see it in a different context. Um, uh, so again, PDF skills in the toilet. Uh, this is Tony Arfabasio from A Life. He was another one of the artists that we used on the Truth Campaign. They wanted somebody super underground, super up and coming. Tony's always been doing some really cool stuff, so we chose him. And this is Dave Kinsey. So this campaign was photographed in New York and California in 2001. So this was kind of my introduction. I had known a lot of graffiti artists and a lot of artists, and this was kind of my first introduction to be able to compile my photography with art, which is something that I've always loved. And I ended up taking that and kind of, um, I, I get really bored really easily. So freelance photography was just annoying the crap out of me and just really, at the time, like, you know, I wanted to do something <coughs> else. So I began um, photo editing for Mass Appeal. Mass Appeal is a New York-based graffiti culture, urban culture magazine. And I've been working for them since about 1997, 98, since almost the beginning of the magazine, taking photos for the magazine. And I approached one of the owners, Adrian, one day, and I said, hey, you know, I really want to be a photo editor. Can I try to be a photo editor with your magazine? And he said yes, and I did it for two years. Um, and here are some of the projects that I worked on as a photo editor for Mass Appeal. Um, we had to do a cover assignment with the BC Boys, so I chose, uh, I figured the BC Boys had always throughout their entire career been photographed by these really kind of underground, super, super cool 
a little at skateboarding industry photographers. So I picked who I thought was the best skateboarding photographer at the time, and that's Brian Gaberman. And we flew him from San Francisco to New York to photograph the BC Boys, and as you can see, it looks pretty sick. Um, this is another project. This guy, Gavin Stevens, a photographer out of San Jose, California, actually worked at the Gold Teeth place. He made the teeth for the people, and when he was done fitting the people with the teeth, he would photograph them, and we did a whole feature. He sent me all these really horrible proof prints, but we did a whole feature on uh, basically his job making gold teeth, and this is just one of the opening spreads from that. So not only do I freelance and take pictures, but I work with a bazillion, bazillion photographers also. I love photographers, they're hilarious. This is um, a, pro a project we did for Mass Appeal on Lamore, which is a legendary Brooklyn heavy metal club, and uh, you'll probably slowly start to see I'm completely obsessed with heavy metal, have been forever and always will be. So I brought this project to Mass Appeal because they're a Brooklyn magazine, and we got a Brooklyn metal club, and this project was my baby. I researched it straight to the ground. Um, got a lot of old photos of the 80s of Lemoore's and an old t-shirt, ticket stubs, backstage passes, whatever. And this collage is actually, I compiled all this stuff from people, put it on the ground and photographed it with a medium format camera. So this is actually a photo of a collage which is kind of intensive and annoying to do but looks really cool. And this is a spread from that feature of a bunch of, uh, a bunch of bands with a lot of hair playing at Lemoore. <laughs> This is a story I brought to Mass Appeal where we had 14 pages and I wanted to kind of showcase zines, not like, you know, black and white Xerox zines, but like the kind of perfect bound zines, mag kind of almost magazines, but they don't have to worry about advertisers, you know, grown up zines. And uh, we picked seven different zines from all over the world and had each of them just do a spread representing their zine. And they could do whatever they want and they did. And this is a uh, made magazine, it's Canadian. They did this spread, I'm sorry, this is gum. Gum magazine. They did that spread. This is another story that I did for Mass Appeal. A huge part of what I do is I'm just kind of always out and around and hanging out and whatever, talking to people, meeting people, and just been on the periphery of all sorts of garbage for a long time. And I, I happen to know casually or very well a lot of random people. And I got a phone call one day from my friend Scott Pommier, who is the photo editor of Transworld Skateboarding, and he had been arrested for skateboarding. Go figure, it happens to everyone, I guess. but. He had been arrested in Huntington Beach in a particularly conservative area of Los Angeles, and uh, they really threw the book at him. He was with Ed Templeton at the time, photographing Ed, and they really threw the book at both of them. I mean, it cost him thousands of dollars to get out of the mess. They threw him in jail for a short amount of time, and it was kind of messy, and I thought it would be cool to do a story in Mass Appeal about that, because as a graffiti magazine, graffiti artists always like to know that other cultures are getting arrested for what they do, too. So that was funny, and I actually had to call Scott several times and help him, like, get out of sticky situations involved with that, it was a mess, but that was another story we did. This story, our art director, Sally Thur, had probably one of the sickest ideas I've ever heard in my life. Um, she wanted to photograph performance sneakers like they're getting dissected like frogs. And uh, I researched and found a photographer to do it, and Sally and I collaborated and really made the whole thing happen. And that's the cool thing about, I mean, freelance photography is one thing, they call you if they want you to go out and shoot an assignment, shoot somebody's portrait and it gets published and it might look good, it might not, might not, whatever, you go home and then you watch TV, whatever, boring. But being a photo editor, you get to work with amazing art directors, amazing artists, amazing photographers, you really get to stick your hands in the goo and like make something cool happen. And this is the result of something really, really cool and we won a lot of awards for this actually, which is pretty neat. Um, this, this is a good lead into actually what I'm doing right now. My bio is a little out of date, so I'll kind of update you a little bit more. This is uh, Bobby Coolio, who's a professional skateboarder. He skates for Enjoy and iPath. He uh, kind of collects trash he finds on the street, for lack of a better term. And he's been collecting all sorts of goodies from the street for over seven years. Since he's a skateboarder, he's constantly looking at the ground. So he finds all this stuff. And after he first started collecting found photos, photos that people would just throw on the street, but after a while, he started noticing that trash kind of came up in certain categories. So he collects particularly particular categories of all this stuff. Um, on the left, you see CD covers, like the plastic cases from CDs, um, just after they've been maimed and mangled by cars and whatnot. Uh, in the middle is his collection of numbers, and on the right is his connection, collection of uh, found money, basically. But Bobby, uh, working with Bobby, I'd always followed Bobby. He's a particularly creative and open-minded person. He's also insane in the best way. But I, I'd always followed him, kind of you know, figuring out what he was up to and really supporting what he was into. And 
at one point I remember it like it was yesterday, you know, we were sitting around and I said, hey, you know, I have an idea, like I was working at Mass Appeal as a photo editor and it, again, it was getting a little bit redundant. I said, I want to start this company where I represent artists and try to help them, you know, produce shows and just help them with all the business crap that goes along with being an artist. Um, can I try and practice with you and see if I can help you out? And he's like, yeah, whatever. So Bobby was my first artist that I worked with and he was kind of the foundation for starting my company that I have now. And we got him a show in LA and we produced that show and we learned a lot of stuff and we just got back from the Netherlands a few months ago where he did a show in Eindhoven at a skate park which was way too much fun. We had a blast. But uh, he was kind of the catalyst for me starting my company and uh, in 2004 I started my company it's called Killer of Giants. It is uh, named after an Ozzy Osbourne song. Everything that I've done in the past, all my shows, I've always named them after heavy metal songs, so my company was no different. Um, and this is basically my company, and I took on Bobby. He was, like I said, the first artist that I worked with. And uh, just kind of help him get press and publicity, produce shows, and do all that kind of stuff. And again, these are some, of, some more of his collections, post-it notes. Um, he's got a billion of these. Playing cards all sorts of stuff. Cassette tapes, which I still have a cassette Walkman, but I don't think anybody else does, so they're a bit antiquated now, I guess. I don't know. But after Bobby, I, I initially, I really wanted to work with photographers because I noticed while I was at Mass Appeal, I would hire skateboarding photographers to shoot portraits for the magazine, and I was just starting to get calls from everyone. Like, every single skateboarding photographer you can even imagine, think of, all over the world would call me like, hey, I really want to shoot, you know, stuff for your magazine. They, they, seems like a lot of them, they're on the road with these guys shooting action shots all the time. A lot of them want to shoot portraits for, I guess, different magazines, legitimate, mag more, you know, portrait magazines, music magazines, what have you, Life, and, uh, New York Times, Sunday Magazine, whatever. So it seemed like there was definitely a void in the market for something like that. All these guys really wanted to branch out. So I've been talking to Andy Mueller at Girl Skateboards, and he's just so busy art directing with Kai and doing eight million things that it wasn't able to work out. Um, but I had been in touch with Brian Gaberman because of the Beastie Boys shoot, and he became my first photographer that I represented. And his photographs are, I don't even need to explain them, he's, I mean, seriously, he's insane, he's so sick. Like, this stuff, a lot of the stuff he does is four by five, he actually seriously still works with eight by 10 glass plate negatives. Like, anybody out there who's a photographer, it's crazy, it's just insane. But he's, his work is beautiful, this is Reese Forbes. So I was really, 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 really excited when, when Brian, and Brian agreed to work with me, and uh, he's just an amazing person, an amazing photographer, and we've since gotten him jobs, you know, the company's very new, it's only a year old, so we're just starting, but we've gotten him jobs with all sorts of up-and-coming, you know, magazines and more legitimate magazines like Guitar World and whatever. He's on the rising slope, basically. But he's an incredible photographer. Oh, that's Tobin Yellen on the left, and my friend Kendra. Tobin's also an amazing photographer. I think that's Jamie Thomas. So he, yeah, Brian's just awesome. I'm gonna show you some of his skateboarding stuff so you can see where uh, where he kind of started. And, and if you're into skateboarding at all, I, I, I'm, you know, pretty sure you've seen his work. He's one of the more distinctive skateboarding photographers out there. And beautiful stuff. It's funny seeing that photo of Thomas Campbell's the skateboarding photo when Christian showed it. It just reminds me of Brian's stuff, and I'm sure Thomas was an influence to Brian. He was a huge influence to me. And this is his more traditional skateboarding stuff that he would do also. So Brian was my first photographer, and after a, after a long time working with Brian and Bobby and, and Holding up my, my freelance career, my company this year has expanded in, incredibly. I have two people working for me now. My freelance career is going completely nuts. Um, and I wanted to pick another photographer, somebody else that I knew really, really well that could kind of uh, fill, fill out the company a little bit, um, somebody to complete it for maybe a couple years, you know, uh, just to have a good foundation. And my friend Mike Schreiber, he is a hip hop photographer. And he's somebody I've known for a really, really long time. And I thought he would be a great addition to round out the company. And I started working with him. Mike's going crazy right now, shooting advertising campaigns and doing all sorts of editorial work. So his career is, is flying, which is great. It's always good when you start a company and it actually goes well. That's a nice feeling. But here, this is MIA. He did all of her press stuff. So 
to me, I have a huge background in being an art nerd. I love artists, I love graffiti culture, I love people that are basically are out there like selling their souls for what they do, that don't give a shit about what people say, that are trying, by chewing their teeth off, going crazy, like living their life, doing real stuff. It, it, it's always been a huge part of who I am. But I, I've had this vision to transcend that. I, I feel like that you know your basic normal client that wants to hire you, I, I feel like there's a huge pool of artists out there that maybe aren't um, able to express what they do to these you know, official clients, and I want to kind of help people do that. I want to kind of transcend that, get, you know, have these sick artists, the real deal, people out there doing it, come in and do something, you know, like a regular job for a regular client, and be able to kind of make that happen. I apologize if I'm not being articulate. Hope, hopefully that makes some sort of sense. But my stuff is really great, too. And on top of representing these photographers and artists, I also curate just an absolute buttload of art shows because I'm obsessed with it. Um, my project section on my website is a little outdated, but I've done several several things. Um, I did actually curated a, a magazine show for JDK Sanctuary Space in Burlington, Vermont, where we had over 100 artists, including Phil Frost and a bunch of artists that have been mentioned here today, we contributed, just made individual zines for the show, and we tore them apart and stapled them to the wall, and it was just... You walked in and there were zines everywhere. I curated it with my friend Herb George. Uh, that was one show that I've done. I worked, uh, there's a zine out of San Francisco called Hamburger Eyes. I worked with them to do um, some New York events as an issue release, not too long ago. Um, this is a show, Ego Trip Magazine is, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with it. They have two books out, top 10 uh, rap lists and Ego Trip's Big Book of Racism. But they originally started as kind of a magazine zine and they wanted to do their, uh, anniversary photo show, a photo show representing all the photographers that had worked for, for them since the beginning, and I curated that for them. That was fun. All sorts of stuff. Oh, this is Bobby Puglia's show in Los Angeles that we produced. It was insanity. It was a lot of fun. What sort of venues are you taking the show? Well, this one was at the New Image Gallery. A lot of them are, I guess, middle-level galleries, kind of um, skateboarder type of art galleries, up and coming galleries. We the, the show that Bobby did in Amsterdam, I'm sorry, Eindhoven, Holland was done, uh, presented by Moo Gallery, which is a very, very legitimate gallery in Eindhoven. They put that show on and that was that was a lot of fun. So we're we're kind of growing and expanding. We're starting with you know middle level galleries and now we're kind of approaching more bigger galleries, I guess you could say. So that's basically an overview of what my company does. Um, I, I basically every day is like waking up and getting hit in the head with a frying pan. It's I'm, everything is new to me. Learning. I never used computers in high school ever. So now I know how to program HTML because I have to. All, all this stuff is just like one thing after another. Like no day is ever easy for me at all. It's always just complete and total insanity. So I'm I'm still evolving. I'm, I'm talking to you right now, really in the thick of my company. It's very very new and it's going really well. And hopefully, as the days grow long, things are going to get better and better. But I feel like this is a really good foundation for about a year or so of people to start working with and getting a, getting more attention for all of the artists that I work with. Um, in terms of the most current stuff that I'm doing, I have been to seven countries this year personally <laughs> for my freelance career. Um, I am in the process of preparing for a solo show in Los Angeles that is going to happen in March of 2006. And the show is basically going to be featuring, um, I've been documenting heavy metal fans all over the world for a short time now. Uh, it's going to be at a 4x4 gallery. It's on Fairfax Avenue in Los Angeles. Um, and I've been documenting, like I said, heavy metal fans. And I've also been documenting a band of 14-year-old kids that uh, play heavy metal in Rhode Island, and they are called Roadkill, because they're from Rhode Island. And uh, I've been following them around for quite some time, and they never cease to amaze me. These kids are pretty, pretty sick kids. Let's see. And they're 14, and fully, they all have braces. Like, it's, <laughs> how can you not love them? They're amazing. And I'm, I'm going to go to prom with them. I'm going. To, they don't know. They don't know yet. I'm going to <laughs> Everywhere. Uh, these, I'm going to just open these. I don't know what they are, clearly, because I don't have the preview, but hopefully this one will be cool. I don't know. Uh, that's cool. This is Ethan with his scythe, right? He's the singer, and as you may or may not know, a singer of a heavy metal band needs a scythe. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know. Um, Open another one, and this is my. This is kind of like I've done a lot of documentary projects over over the years. I've I've been to Cuba three times, and and 
I have a book coming out in 2006 uh, about Cuban hip hop, and that was a lot of fun. But this is a, in addition to that, this is one of the first major documentary projects that I've taken on um, these kids, and I'm just obsessed with them. And they're going to be part of the show in Los Angeles, in addition to all the heavy metal fans that I've been photographing. Um, yeah, and that's, I guess that's about it. Nothing too crazy. It's kind of hard to talk about your career when you're in the middle of it. These guys, Christian and Ryan, probably understand. And that's Brian. He uh, found him at, in Boston at OzFest. And he recently emailed me and was like, oh, I can't believe you're getting that photo published. I'm not very photogenic. <laughs> it's clearly crazy. <laughs> he's, now he's 17. So he's turning into an old man, I guess. And this is Constanza. Every time I show this photo to my guy friends, they all make interesting noises. Like, Whoop. She's she's cool, and her hair is like down to her thighs. She's just intense and insane, sweetheart. But yeah, that's I guess that's about it. Uh, uh, one other thing I, I suppose I left out is uh, one of my biggest clients right now that kind of helps me do whatever it is that I can do is Urban Outfitters. I have what no matter what you think of them, I'm sure some of you think are corny or whatever. I've been working for them for a short while. I've done seven of their catalogs, and they really uh, enable me to run my company because they, you know, their pay rate is decent, and me, they fly me all over the world, which is great, and they just kind of allow me to do what I do, so I'm really thankful um, that I am able to work for them, so some of the stuff I do for them. So I basically take all that money they give me and put it straight back into my company, and without them it would be a lot harder, so it's a really good gig. And uh, again, this is more commercial stuff, you know, like I, I photographed a million, bazillion graffiti artists and any number of hip hop musicians, metal musicians, whatever, what have you, but I'm not afraid or, or sad or mad at doing things like this. To me, I love these photos just as much. They're really important to me, even though they're a lot more commercial and that kind of, again, represents my tie to trying to bring something more legitimate into the more commercial world and doing a good job at both. And uh, because of all this Urban Outfitter stuff, I'm, I'm going to start marketing my freelance photography towards teen market because there's a lot of cash there. But, uh, and it's also fun. I don't know why I like shooting it, but I do, you know? So that's just some of my teen stuff. And yeah, I guess that's it. So thank you.